Hi everybody, it is April and I'm in my craft room and today we are going to make another three yard quilt. I recently went on a little quilt shop hop. It was on the way to Lake Barkley, which is in Kentucky, and I was going to a crop because I am so far behind on photos and that kind of thing. I just took that stuff to Lake Barkley, but uh, yes, my YouTube photo bomber is here. So I didn't take anything quilting, but we did stop at multiple quilt shops throughout the trip. It was a lot of fun. And I bought two new books. I will be doing a video. I took pictures of the quilt shops that I went to and with permission, of course. So I will be having a slideshow, kind of your old school slideshow because I took pictures. I didn't do videos inside the quilt shops. So I'll do a little slideshow, my cat, and then I will share what I bought at each quilt shop and share the, the names of the quilt shops because if you are ever in the Kentucky, Tennessee area, then there are some awesome places around there to shop. So one of my purchases was three yard quilts in a jiffy. I know, you would have thought I would have them all, but I didn't. And what we're going to do today is called button box. Now, I'm going to share with you how to put the blocks together. I can't share with you measurements because this is not my book. This is a book that Donna Robertson wrote and I don't want to infringe on her copyright. So I'm going to show you what fabrics I'm going to use and then I'll show you cutting the fabrics, not going to include measurements, but you can go down to my description below and I'll show you links where you can go and buy these books. They're awesome. They're, they're worth the 15 or $16 that they cost us. Don't know what they cost other places. So the fabric line that I'm using today is, let's see, it's by Wilmington and I keep calling it the wrong thing. Raindrops and sunshine is the name and let's see fabric one is this cute print and it's also got a be happy be kind be you and you know it's rainbows so that's going to be my fabric one this is going to be fabric two and it's just a coordinating fabric that came with the line and this is going to be my fabric three. And I guess these are raindrops, but they're on pink. So, you know, usually rain, I think, either good sleeping weather or you're unhappy, but how can you be unhappy with pink raindrops, right? Let's see. Yep, raindrops and sunshine and Rowan Wilmington prints. This is something new that my local quilt shop had and I just had to have it. And I'll list them as well. It's uh, among friends and they are in the Louisville area. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, let me show you what the layout looks like. It is, ooh, I was gonna show you the wrong one. It is this layout right here. I want to do this layout as well, but I wanted to use a directional print and I didn't want to have to worry about which way I was turning it. So I thought this button box would be perfect because there are squares of just your fabric one. So I think that'll highlight that fabric and then the other fabrics will just blend right in. So. I always forget to say this. If you like my videos, please give them a thumbs up. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, then subscribe and click the bell to be notified when I upload. 
Let's go. Grace, be nice. My fabric is cut. So now I need to sew. Let's see. Using one fabric number two. Fabric number two. Ah, <laughs> I kind of know where fabric number two is. I do know where fabric number two is. Whew, scared myself for a minute there. Okay, so using fabric number two and fabric number three. Okay, so I'm going to sew these together. I like to look at the pictures because they make sense to me. Sometimes. All right. So I'm going to sew these two together. I'll be right back. So I'm going to press this open before I cut it. And again, I am pressing I am not ironing because when you're working with strip sets like this, you can easily stretch your fabric. So we're going to start out with this. And from this, we need to cut some strips. So we sew our strips so we can cut our strips. Okay. So let me break out the ruler. I probably should get a shorter ruler for this kind of cutting. But what's the fun in that? There's no challenge in that. All right, so I'm gonna cut off my selvage and I'm going to line it up. I've got a white line here and I'm going to line this up on the seam. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm cutting it the right way. Okay, I believe I am. Fortunately, I have that measurement on my ruler, and again, I'm going to line it up, try to line it up on the seam, as well as on the edge. Using one unit A, this is unit A, and one fabric number two. So what it wants me to do is take this and put it, sew it to this. Almost kind of chain piece it. Like this. Which I find very interesting. Does it matter which side I sew it on? I'm going with no. I am going to sew seam down though, I think. 
we'll zoom in here I uh, believe this is what I'm being asked to do so let's go So I've got my strip sets sewn together. Technically, I should press my seam first. Then I'm going to open and press. No ironing because these are already a little shifty. Now let's cut these boogers apart. And I'm going to break out my small ruler with that. First we're gonna go on this side. So let's bring this little strip around. I'm going to take my ruler, I'm gonna line it up here. So my intention is not to cut anything other than the two and a half inch strip. So a good rule of thumb would be to line up your seam as well as the edge of your block. And this is what you're going to get. Unit C takes our squares of fabric two and then matches them with unit B. And this is usually where I get into trouble. So what we're going to do, take this, let's get a good one. going to go here and it's going to go here oh look got a little issue there I probably pressed that the wrong way you know what I think it is going to be easier so I've pressed this where all this bulk is right here in the center and I really what I want to do is press it away from this seam so that I don't have so much bulk. So I'm gonna do that right now. So here we've got fabric two and our fabric here. We take our strip set and we sew fabric two to fabric three and then we trim and we get this. This is going to be attached to this strip and that is going to be attached like this and here is where I'm sewing these particular pieces to the strip and I questioned Donna on whether or not this was a good idea it works beautifully I don't know why I questioned you Donna you know what you're doing so let's watch sewing this here Once we're done sewing this, we're going to trim the different squares like this. And we end up with this. Now we're going to take this and we are going to sew it to 
this square. And that is going to produce this. And we are going to do that enough times to create multiples of these. So here it's the same way. Now, when you sew and you get this, you want to press the seam towards the square, not toward, towards just the, the square, not the pieced square. First of all, if you were to press it towards this pieced square, you're going to have a lot of bulk. We can always press towards the fabric square, not the pieced square, because we are going to end up flipping one side. And this makes our little button here, and it makes nesting our seams work really nicely. Here I have my pieced square with my fabric square. I'm going to press and then I'm going to press towards this fabric square, not towards the pieced square. I'm just going to press and that way my seam is towards this fabric. And once that is pressed, then we are going to sew these two sides together. And when you're taking this from your cutting table to your sewing machine, remember the two, well, the pinks, <laughs> they're the pinks for me, but your fabric three will be the side that you sew on. So you don't want to sew on this side. There's no fabric three on this side. You only sew it on the side where your fabric three is in the seam. And with that, you're going to end up with this block. This block is going to be next to this block. So you don't have to worry about lining up any seams. How cute is that? When you put your blocks together, what you want to do when you press is press your seam towards this block that is not pieced. That way, when you put your rows together, you can nest very easily. If you have directional fabric, you will want to be careful. I do have directional fabric, so make sure that your directional fabric is facing the right way. So I've got my two pieces. This is the first block and the second block, and then I'm going to attach them to these two. So I want to make sure that when I do that, these two are both facing up, and then I'll fold it over and sew this seam. And even when I press my full block, so I put the two sets of blocks together, I want to press towards the fabric, not towards the pieced blocks, but just towards the, the fabric block. And again, press, don't iron. Otherwise, your block will be a little crooked. Here are two of the rows put together. This material is so cute. Three 
three rows. So the middle part of my quilt is done and here's where I deviate from the actual pattern. Now it calls for a skinny border of fabric three. I actually have another piece of fabric that goes with this line that I want to use as a border, but I also want to use fabric three as a border. So I am going to use fabric three but a wider strip of fabric three it's actually supposed to have a skinny strip of fabric three and then another skinny but not quite a skinny strip of fabric two and then a wider strip of fabric three so i'm just going to take the wider strip of fabric three and i'm going to put it on the outside and then i'm going to pull in that other fabric which kind of doesn't make this just a three yard quilt but i want to pull in that other fabric and put another border on the outside so let me go add those borders and i'll be right back my quilt is done i actually changed my mind once i put this big border of the fabric three on and knowing that this was going to be for a child I decided that I didn't want to add another border partly because the border that I thought about adding I've decided I want to use as my binding so it's really cute it's kind of like a rickrack and I think it'll be really cute as a binding on the outside of the quilt that is one of the really great things about these three yard quilts is the versatility you can make them as big or as small as you want and that just makes them really easy to use another thing that i want to do is i want to take a block and maybe it would be a block like this block this pieced block and I want to use that around a panel. I don't know if it will necessarily be this piece block, but one of the blocks from her patterns, I would like to use around a panel because I think that would be really cool. Now this wouldn't be an April quilt if there wasn't a mistake. And I am not ripping out any seams. So when I go through and show you the quilt at the end, leave a comment below if you find my um, boo-boo. Thank you for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you want to see more tutorials like this, please subscribe. Have a great day. Eat some chocolate and be kind to everyone. Until next time, bye. nesting your